Warning, this video contains animals caught in a trap. Some content may be disturbing for some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. It's gonna take off running too. <laughs> right past us. Sticks off. You're good to go, bud. Get out of here. That is a big coon. Yes, it is. <laughs> Ideally, I'd like if I catch a coyote, it goes farther than that. A little bit of an incidental catch there, but we're out with our buddy Tony today. We met Tony hunting some public land this year and he's gotten to be a pretty good friend of ours and big coyote trapper and uh, always been interested to see how guys do this kind of stuff. So I thought we'd come along and tag with him today. Hopefully we'll have a cool couple of videos for you guys here in the off season. How many do you think you will get today, Tony? No, I'd like to catch one, but... <laughs> it's been a slow morning so far. Basically, you just do not want this trap to move at all. That thing is rock solid right there. Coyote steps anywhere in here and doesn't hit the pan of your trap and that thing rocks under his foot. There's no doubt he's gonna dig it up every time. This ground is rock hard. You know, their walks say they, they put on 15 miles one night. They're on rock hard ground all of a sudden they hit this wax dirt. And they feel this wax dirt soft underneath their feet. They don't know what's going on, so I mean, they know something's wrong and they dig it up. That's why you want your trap bed just as tight and tiny as possible. So, their first step, you don't want them to step there or there or there or there. You kind of make sure that they put their foot right there every single time. Always put their foot like in the lowest spot typically. Take a little, a couple little, something to block it a little bit. Should be all she wrote. Oh, he's got something bad, dude. Little mange. Oh, look, look at all the bugs on his back. Yeah, I see that. You got no hair in the middle there. Well, it's starting to get bad. <laughs> Definitely. Kind of. There's a piece of my bone. I kind of build this up here just so they don't approach it from the. Okay, at least it's up to chew on while he's here. <laughs> he's got it cleaned right off. 
<laughs> it was all full of meat. That little, it's called a night latch, that little click that you hear. Yeah. There's like a little groove filed in, filed in there. Um, these traps, they come like, they come like that back in the day. And like on a lot of other types of traps, you have to like file those in yourself and it takes forever. It's uh, basically where it's just, um, this is called the dog, that silver, that stainless mm -hmm. thing right there. And uh, so it's like on a hair trigger, like these, these are set for like three and a half pounds of, of pressure. So you don't want them so light that a coyote just barely touches that and it fires and then you'll catch them by the toe or whatever. They have to, you know, have their foot right on it to, Set it off. I don't know if I can have enough wax dirt here, but let me see. Don't freeze down. It's not even gonna really get very cold the next few days. No. All this stuff is gonna freeze like a rock. You just don't want your levers to these levers to freeze. Uh, you really don't want those levers to touch that frosty hard dirt right there because that's going to freeze and you want those levers to be able to come up. If you've ever seen one frozen into the ground and you touch it and like they, they come up in slow motion, it's like <clears throat> the it would have about 30 seconds to react to this. <laughs> now I used to, so you need bone dry dirt. Yeah. And it is hard to, unless you do it all in the summer, which every summer I say that I'm going to, and I <laughs> forget, and then it comes this time, and you're looking for dry dirt. You can go underneath bridges or whatever, and you'll find bone dry dirt, but now I just buy it all from uh, Home Depot. They have those bags, tube sand or whatever. Yep. It's all pre It's all screened and, and sifted and everything. I'll screen. I'll sift it again, but it's usually really dry. Like with all these smells here and everything, you know, it might be a lot of times they'll just they'll there'll definitely be coyotes that come and check this out. But a lot of times they'll just stay right on the edge of this catch circle. Like if you put another trap in here with just like a piss post or something, mm -hmm. like you can nail another one in here. Yeah. And a lot of times these spots will turn into a just a hot spot now. On the track line again with Tony today. And uh, he's actually getting ready to go home here pretty soon, but Decided to come through here with him today on his last full check and then tomorrow he's just going to come through and check everything and pull all his traps, but we uh, didn't really know what to expect today. We came down to uh, this river set here where there's a big oxbow and coyotes obviously travel through here quite a bit. And um, yeah, anyway, there's two. We got two about 100 yards apart from each other. Pretty good start to the morning here. We've only checked a couple sets so far and we've already got two. I think he said this is his ninth day in a row with at least one dog, so pretty nice. Look how many coyotes came in here. Uh. I don't know if that was a male or female. Yeah, the amount of tracks down here is unreal. I caught two, I had two doubles this year, but not like right next to each other like this. I mean, I could have probably had a dozen down here, it looks like. Especially you get down in the, the bottom, the scent just hangs down in here. I'm sure they could just smell them. We're on this little bench here, and this is an absolutely killer coyote trail. I caught one probably 20 yards away from here. 
and then we picked up one uh, last night on this same bench probably 100 yards from here so ideally they're they're kind of like creeping through here and they're very cautious um, so I don't know if we're gonna catch one here or not ideally I want them trotting down the trail and never break in stride um, I try to always set these up um, it doesn't always work out this way where I'm on the downwind side so I am standing where uh, we're gonna have the thermals pulling down this ridge and this is also the downwind side too but so this isn't the greatest spot here but we're kind of low on options on spots that we can set here so I'm going to try to put it in this little piece of cover here and I'm going to use this little bush here to kind of break up the top of that snare and then I'm going to have to kind of blend this in a little bit. And I take my snare support that I have here, put that in the same hole that I have my stake. Sometimes I'll pack some snow around this so it doesn't spin around on me. I'll give this a couple wraps. I like mine I like the smaller the loop you can have the better but if the trail is super super tight but I usually try to run like a 10 inch loop 10 inches off the ground that's just how I do it some guys do bigger some guys do smaller that's probably like a 9 inch loop and on my hammer here I have a little piece of tape you kind of just get a feel for this but that's at 10 inches so right there I'm at like nine from the ground that's pretty good I'll probably pick it up just to fuzz bend that down the more you can have that bent down the better so it just takes just a little bit to fire that snare then I'll take a few little things here basically I want to break up I want to break up this portion I want to break up this portion and this lock I want to break that up where they really can't see that I'll take something like this and put it right in this hole and I'll take Something like this. You don't want to do too much. This is perfect though, right here. It, I like things that are the shape of the snare. Like, that's like camouflaging 101, like something that has this big curve in it like this, or it looks really natural. Something like that, and then I'll take this, will break up this other side. And then, last and the most important is uh, your chin lift. So, basically, coyote running down the trail, half the time he has his head up, half the time he has his nose on the ground. And if his nose is on the ground, he's going to whack this snare with the top of his head and you're not going to get him. So you want, if his nose is on the ground, you want something that just naturally, there's always sticks and trails like this. 
something that's just naturally gonna bring his nose up and he's gonna pick his nose up so it doesn't hit the stick and he's gonna put his head right into that loop. So I'll probably put one more little one in on this side. Some guys don't blend these snares in hardly at all. I like to, I would rather do more than spend a little bit of extra time on it. But. And I will do one like this just to help break that up and lift his head into that. Something like that. And then I will sift snow just right, right there to help hold those sticks in. And then I will sift snow on my, just on my tracks right here just so that coyote does not stop at all. I don't want him to see this dirty snow. I don't want him to see my track. When he knows that I was here, it's too late. That's basically it. i just hang a little ribbon here and where they're not gonna really see it or pay any attention to it, and that's all she wrote.